when we were in the army, I always started my day with caffeine and hate. Hey guys, this is the Hard Time Strongman Podcast, cheering up a better class of man. And today we have another data episode for you, how to build and maintain healthy habits. But first, a data episode. Six, you go first. A data episode? You mean a dad joke? Well, listen, you know what I meant. You are a dad joke. Anyway, um, all right. Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the day I turned 42, my daughter walked up to me and said happy and started timing on her watch. After a long silence, she said, 42nd birthday. I was so <gasps> proud. You're like, you like you had me in the first you had me in the first half. <laughs> <laughs> you you roped me right in. I told my daughter, go to bed. The cows are sleeping in the field. She said, What's that got to do with anything? I said, it means it's past your bedtime. <laughs> pasture. Pasture. Bedtime. Pasture bedtime. <laughs> You're making me vomit. It's so bad. I You're making me vomit. Oh, so bad. What do you call a grizzly bear that gets wet? Please don't say a drizzly bear. A drizzly bear. You you used that one already. Did I? Dang it. Yes. It was like the first one you used. Do you know that my dog knows math? Oh, God. Yeah. I asked him, what's two minus two? You know what he said? Nothing. My wife found out I was cheating on her after she found all the letters I was hiding. She got mad and said she's never playing Scrabble with me again. (laughs) Why didn't the bicycle stand up? It was too tired. I know the answer to this one. Yep. Yep. (laughs) What has five toes but isn't your foot? What? It's my foot. (laughs) What's blue but smells like red paint? Blue paint? (laughs) (laughs) What do you call Lee with one leg? Poppy? Eileen. Oh, God. I built a model of Mount Everest, and my son asked, is it to scale? I replied, no. Dummy. It's to look at. Oh, my. (laughs) (laughs) You idiot. (laughs) I can't with you. You are welcome. What a way to kick off a data set. I'm trying to find anyway. my book. I have a book of dad jokes. Anyways. Dad jokes. Save them. Uh, Save them for the next one. Anyway, guys. Double this it. is the our. Yeah. This is our building and maintaining healthy habits episode for our data sode. I don't know about you, but even growing up, I wasn't really taught how to build or maintain healthy habits. I was just taught to go through life, you know. Or why it was important. Go from there. Exactly. Why it was important. Why is it important to make your bed? Why is it important to brush your teeth? I mean, well, everybody knows why it's important to brush your teeth because, you know, sometimes you have to stand more than like three feet closer to the people. So there's that. But the the consistency, the discipline wasn't wasn't like really taught to me. Like, correct. These are things that you have to do. Like, like there you go like no no reasoning no n- nothing given no context nothing it was just like this is what you do do it this is what you do do it and when you ask why what was always the answer it's just what you do because i said so oh because i said so yeah that's another one yeah mm-hmm. just kind of toxic if you think about it but oh dude that's a lot to unpack yeah I know. We are not going to do that on this episode. We will have a mental health episode at some other time. (laughs) Oh, gosh. You guys will be first in line for our therapy session. He'll be great. 
or suicide, whichever comes first. Yeah, fair. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Mama didn't reason no quitter. So. <laughs> so, healthy habits. We're this- going to hell. <laughs> Tell it's going to be such a train ride, too. We're going to go reading straight in there. Tell them who sent you. Uh, so, healthy yeah. habits. This is a this is kind of a hard episode to quantify, kind of a hard episode to to organize, to um, to lay out effectively. So, what do when you think of healthy habits, what comes to mind? Uh, getting up early, making your bed. organizing your day Mm, that is a huge one that's a huge one i've yeah i do that i've heard that from so many from so many guys so many mentors and so many people that mentor people like for a living you know the guys that run like the the men's groups and everything Mm -hmm. just organizing your time is an absolute necessity and i am very very guilty of that but i'm getting better at it yeah, I actually I saw, do well, schedule a lot of things and maintain that schedule. Well, this last episode, you showed me your notebook. You started keeping a notebook with you. Mm-hmm. That's huge. Yeah. yeah. So, for me, I guess before all, before we dive into like the certain habits, I think the why for me is really huge. So you, like you said, when you were growing up, when I was growing up, at least. Pretty sure it was the same for you. Just kind of went through life, you know. Every mm-hmm. you know the days ran together. I wasn't you know the most productive I could be. I wasn't you know a slob. I wasn't you know great either. And just the I can really see a correlation between my lack of you know discipline and organization with just my lack of motivation. You know, right. if you don't expect anything of yourself you're not gonna get anything you know what i mean right like that i guess self-actualization that um that expectation for yourself feeds into a lot of this everything dude it's everything i look at my wife who's a type a plus plus Mm. plus person like she schedules pretty much her entire day and she is one of the most honestly successful people i know professionally and personally like she man if you don't if you don't get on her docket to hang out like you're not hanging out (laughs) weeks months in advance yeah you're not hanging out like we'll see you sometime and honestly, I'm getting to that point too. Like it's it's kind of nice because we're both kind of antisocial in a way, but it is nice knowing what you've got going on and coming up so that you can plan accordingly. So that's why you and don't that was definitely calls. also yes, <laughs> but also because I didn't want to. But no, um, <laughs> no, that's that's one thing I didn't do growing up, and I wish I would have. I wish I would have been way more driven when i was growing up but then again you know i mean that's everything on though. farm <laughs> like like your your day is planned for you you know what you're doing day in day out mm-hmm. even when you're in like middle school high school and you're still doing that stuff it's like you know what you're doing you know what has to be done on a daily freaking basis and that's why i love being in the army because i almost knew what was going to be going on day after day after day especially Mondays is what was going on Mondays. Motor pool Mondays. Motor pool Monday. Every single Monday. What's going what's going on on Fridays? Getting hazed. And getting drunk. Oh, yeah. Oh wait, that was every day. Um <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> uh no, so for me with with this, you know, as I you know, as I live, as I grow. Right, we really push the, you know, the idea of being a lifelong learner. Right, always trying to better yourself, always trying to get better in some facet, you know, every day. Right, mm-hmm. but especially as I've grown into the role of a husband and the role of a father, right, 
my time is valuable is yes. a valuable commodity if yes. if nothing else simply for the fact that I don't have a lot of it <laughs> outside of being a husband outside of being a father and all those responsibilities right outside of working full time you know and running this yeah. podcast and this company along with you right my time is sparse so yeah. anything that i can do to maximize that time that efficiency make my time go farther you know i need to i need to be doing that you know there's a lot that i want to accomplish in this life and i don't know yeah. where the lord's going to take me i don't know what's going to happen tomorrow right so it's you know my responsibility to do the best with what i can with where i'm at you know with the resources available so for me you know going with the start of your day right i i wake up probably between 4:45 and 4:55 every rough. yeah every every work morning it's horrible well, i have an hour commute right so you know depending on you know wherever my mm. next job is going to be they'll obviously change but i get it before the sun which i hate but it's a means to an end right i am not a morning person by <laughs> you know by heart and that's just something i'm you know i have to deal with because that is you know when my house is asleep is time that i have yeah where i can do whatever i need to do right so recording this episode my family's asleep with you know going and doing morning chores before i have to go to work so you know gain my quiet time in with the lord doing pt uh you know doing all my outside chores with the dogs with the chickens with the garden you know all that happens before my family wakes up and so i have to plan accordingly you know along right there with, with you man you know getting ready for you know work and everything else but mm -hmm. i would say that is one of the the biggest healthy habits I would say is having a quiet time, you know, regardless of, uh, what your faith is having a time, you know, I call it quiet time. Some people call it meditation, right? Just time in your own, you know, head in quiet, right. In stillness and sitting in that for a while really helps you to kind of frame your day and kind of get, get you in the right headspace. For where you need to be. I like that. I'm going to start doing that. Yeah. This week's episode is brought to you by FieldSeats.com. FieldSeats.com is an e-commerce, federally licensed firearms dealer. They provide virtual reviews on brand new firearms, optics, and gear. Or at the end of the review, they give away the item being reviewed to an attendee. Currently, they've got reviews ranging from the Shadow Systems MR920 for $35, the Springfield M1A, for $65 or Chichicon ACOG with RMR for $60. Each review has limited seating, so your chances of winning the giveaway are that much higher. Check out fieldseats.com to purchase your reviews and enter to win the item being reviewed and use code STRONGMEN to get 10% off your Be sure to check out their Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at field underscore seats for updates on products and other tips and info. Use code STRONGMEN to receive 10% off your entire purchase at fieldseats.com. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks for listening, guys. Now back to the episode. Stay in the fight. Something that I used to do at the beginning. So I so for my quiet time, you know, I have my time with Laura. I get in the word. I have a a uh, a devotional that I go through and everything. You know, I'll spend that time going through my daily calendar. You know, all that stuff. But what I used to do was I would use the Wim Hof breathing method. You know, like the deep breathing exercises. Mm -hmm during that time and yeah it's really it's really huge being able to get yourself just you know mentally in that right headspace before you do anything else throughout the day it starts you off on a on the right foot that's good because you know at least when we were in the army i always started my day with caffeine and hate so yeah, yeah. i, I think healthy. meditation would be a better yeah. <laughs> yeah i think i think meditation would be in like at least 15 20 30 minutes of quiet time meditation yeah. otherwise yeah. would be a good way to start the day get your get your mind right get yourself centered look at what you got going for the day and proceed to then kick the day in the teeth 
Exactly. You know, and you know, like I said, so I spend my quiet time, you know, in the word praying, just kind of, you know, getting myself right. But at the end of that, I, you know, go into my daily planner, my monthly planner and I say, okay, like this is what I have going on, you know, for this upcoming week. These are my goals. Mm-hmm. This is what has to happen. And then I go into my daily planner, you know, my little pocket calendar, my little pocket planner. I'm like, okay, these are my goals for today. These things have to get done at some point. Yeah. You know, during that time. And I'm not as good about uh, blocking off hours because you know, so much of my week is taken up, you know, at work where I, you know, I'm very limited with what I'm able to do outside of, you know, just working. So I'm not really digging into that too much, but definitely playing out your day. You know, obviously this should be done before, right? So you know, already have your calendar, you know, filled out with right, everything filled you need out, to yeah. do. But having a final look before your day starts has been really helpful to me. That's yeah, that's kind of key too, because like that at least then it allows you to know what's coming up. So you're prepared, so you're not surprised by anything. Yeah. And so that you can actually plan your time accordingly. Like, okay, well, I've got this going on. It's going to take me this amount of time to get there. I need to leave by now, like yeah. this time. Right. So which it's means I the, need to start getting ready by this time, which means I need to start drinking my coffee by this time. Yeah. So you're, yeah. you're back planning, right? Something that really helped me with that, um, I have it on my phone, but you could also just draw it out in your, you know, in your planner. It's called a sectograph, if I'm not mistaken. And basically all it is, it's a clock. But the time frame for different tasks is highlighted in different portions, right? So as you go throughout the day, you know, say, all right, my wake up and quiet time PT time is from five o'clock to six thirty, that block. So if you're on paper, you would block off, you know, that those hour and minutes, and like that is what this time is for. And you go all throughout, you know, the first twelve hours, and then, you know, the second twelve hours, you know, you'd have a separate graph. But um, that just really helps visually you know if you're a visual learner being able to see where your time is going i think you can check your you know watch oh crap you know i'm so now i'm into this time block and you can cross off as you go or being able to look ahead on your day and like you said like if i'm going to do this i need to do this this and this first so being able to yeah. see how all that flows is a is a really useful tool and then another healthy habit pt you know, yeah. physical exercise in whatever capacity you're able in whatever your routine that you're currently doing. You know, it used to be uh, best practice was like moderate activity for such and such time, five times a week. I would, you know, I'm not a health guru. I can't give you hard and fast rules on that. But for a healthy lifestyle, I would say that you need to be active every single day. Mm -hmm. You know, don't, don't kill yourself. Don't max every single day on something, right? You need to give your body it's time to rest, but you need to be living an active lifestyle. So do something physical, preferably, you know, moderate activity, right? If you're, if you're able, you know, time and uh, capacity allowing, but you know, do something physical every single day and a way very least just get out and walk yeah yeah so something walk around the block a few times yeah so some so i've put in a couple fail safes for myself that have helped me when i don't have the motivation or the discipline to you know actually go through a good workout every day that just Mm -hmm. keeps me active right so every single morning you know part of my morning routine i walk my dogs one, because they're crap heads if they don't get their walk. You know, they get too excited and you know, they tear stuff up, right? But, you know, two, that helps me wake up in the morning. You know, walking around, around the block, one, it, you know, gets my face out there. You know, people see me, they recognize me, you know, the early birds, at least, right? That gets me, that gets me out in my community. You know, I get to, you know, feel the day, feel the morning. I'm still up before the sun. You know, and that does wonders just on a, you know, just on a physical level. Um, yeah. But two, I start off with good activity, you know, getting my blood flowing. 
you know, getting out, breathing the cold air. Awesome. Another uh, contract that I made with myself, and you know, obviously your results may vary with this, but contract I hold with myself, I'm not allowed to enter my car without first doing some sort of exercise with the sandbag I keep in my trunk. It's a good one. An odd one. You've got to get a lot of weird looks when you do that. I really do. Yeah, i got gotten a lot of weird looks. I've got a lot of uh, like people making fun of me in the parking lot at work. <laughs> but like that, that is a thing for me. And it doesn't matter what time of day. It doesn't matter if I'm out getting groceries. It doesn't matter you know, if I'm going to work, heading home from work, going to church. You know, If I'm going anywhere in my vehicle, right, because I have my sandbag there, before I can get into my car, I have to do something. Whether that's curls, whether that's extensions, whether that's you know knee touches or squats or push-ups or whatever, I am doing something with that bag before I can get in my car. It's a contract that I made with myself, and so I hold myself to that. I'm investing in myself doing that, and so even if I can't get a good workout during the day, you know I will have had to do something multiple times throughout the day to you know to keep the activity up. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, like with me starting this, this new career, like, I've found myself needing more and more to revert back to the way I was in the army, especially with structuring my day, structuring my schedule and make, and holding myself accountable to those. Yeah. So it's a work in progress. Let's just say that because I've been a little too used to the whole civilian lifestyle. And it's kind of like, I need to culture shock myself into getting back into it. Mm -hmm. But if I can do it, anybody can do it as old as I am, you know? Yeah. Well, I found that even, you know, trying to go back to the, to the old way, you know, like these big workouts, you know, like once or twice a day, like really early in the morning or like, you know, late at night, like that is, that's hard for me to get back into going from cold Turkey. So, you know, doing these little contracts, like in, like these little things, like mm -hmm. this one I would do is, you know, pick a workout, so like push ups, right? And say, okay, yeah. I have this amount of time. I'm going to do 100 push ups in, you know, this block of time. And then you have to do that back, you know, that back planning and like, all right, I have to do 10 push ups in, you know, every 10 minutes or, you know, whatever. And, you know, it's not strenuous activity, but it's keeping you going. And you're building the endurance, you know, because you have to be moving. You have to be doing something, you know, throughout the, right. throughout the day, throughout the day. Yeah. And, you know, just in my head, you know, I'm weak, right? I'm weak at heart, but in my head, it's like, I can do two, I can do 10 pushups. Yeah, I can do that. And it helps me to kind of, you know, get over that, you know, hurdle of, oh, well, I don't really want, you know, screw that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You, 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 you gotta get yeah. better. So. Uh, and then I put it in there more as a joke, but it's honestly something that's helped me a lot is just touch grass every single day. It's getting outside. Yeah. Like get some vitamin D, like get outside, touch some grass, breathe some fresh air. Don't get cooped up inside all day, every day. I, yeah, I get it, man. I'm with you right there. Even if it's just, you know, in the morning, yeah, taking your coffee and stepping outside and drinking it. Yeah. Five and minutes, just staying ten out minutes there. a day. Yeah. Yeah. It it does wonders for you, man. It does wonders Especially for you. after this this whole COVID thing with everybody being cooped up at home. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised how many people well, you probably wouldn't be surprised, but there has been a ton of people who just stayed inside. Yeah. Well, and we wonder why depression has gone through the roof. Mental health's gone through the roof. I mean, what do you <laughs> expect? Yeah, you know, we're social yeah. creatures. You know, we need it. Speak for yourself. I'm an introvert. <laughs> you run a podcast. Listen, that depends I interact on you with, interacting with people. So does my career, but here I am. <laughs> <laughs> here I am. Uh, I'm an extrovert introvert. How about that? Hey, Google, how do you say internally screaming in Spanish? <laughs> subtitles subtitles 
All right. What's another healthy habit that you work in throughout the day? I would honestly say cooking. cooking. Like I, we make it a point in this house to do as little ordering in or eating out as possible. Like we do our best to cook meals here at home. Cause for one, I don't know how many of you have ever noticed this, but if you order your meals through say Uber eats or even go pick up something, they don't taste good. They don't travel well. Even if no. you go out to eat, yes, it's good. But number one, you don't get the same satisfaction as you would cooking that same meal at home. So we cook here at home as much as possible and we cook good food. It's, I have not had one single complaint from the food that I've cooked, from the food that she's cooked. It's been fantastic. And even the dog has a complaint. So here we are. But that's but the no, thing, like, like stuff I, that you I, make I, at home, like, you know, that ownership, that means something, you know? And we talked exactly. about this before, you know, I have chickens, right? Backyard chickens. Those are the best eggs I've ever had. Period. Yeah. Flat out. And, you know, it has to do with that ownership with and just that health. You know, I know exactly what those chickens ate. I know exactly what life those chickens, you know, have lived to, you know, to this point. And it's it's just taking that that ownership of, you know, like you said, like cooking your own meal. Right. You know, no one's going to take as much care into that as you are. Right. That's just, you know, that's just a, that's just a fact. So it's, it's, it's the same principle as people going out and buying free range eggs or grass fed beef. Like you want to know where this has come from because it tastes better. You want to know like, it's better what's going into this stuff because it tastes better and it's better for you. Exactly. Like, are you going to go eat, I, I don't know, beef that like literally all they've done is like stand in a stall and get fed lard? Like, no. Well, well absolutely not. Well, what's better, a burger that you get from, you know, a farmer's market or a double quarter pounder from McDonald's? I mean, there, there's no, there's no comparison. No. Well, I mean. I get the point, but bad example because McDonald's is crap food anyway. So just putting it out there. Yeah, I know. You wouldn't know. You'd stop eating McDonald's a long time ago. Oh, so it's been I. years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have been dead Honestly. a long time ago. Mm hmm. But yeah, I mean, what else you got? Like, what are their habits? God, leave me out. That was my thing. Like I was just trying to think of what, what else? Because I I take it off every time throughout the day. So my quiet time, PT, touch grass. I mean, those are the three major so, things. So here's a good one. Like we talked about mental health. We talked about, you know, getting your mind right. So one of the things that um, my wife and I both do is like. So people tend to jump to conclusions when they think they know the information, but really you only know the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. and there's still so much left. So they think the worst of people. We've actually tried to get into habit more and more of just not thinking the worst of people, but actually thinking the best of them. So it's like, you know, say you got into an argument with your spouse. Um, I don't know. I'm pulling something out of thin air here. Um, they did something wrong or you assume that they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Like, are you just going to continue to let that like build up in your mind? Or are you just going to be like, you know what? No, let me give with them the benefit of the doubt. They're probably doing the right thing. You're thinking better of them. Like you're giving them, you're giving yourself that positive reinforcement. Honestly, like, is it the more you think worse of somebody, the more it's going to drag your mind down anyway. Mm-hmm. And one, also one huge thing that I have always used, um, especially in relationships, especially when I'm in a serious relationships, is the five second, five minute, five year rule. Mm. If you get into an argument with somebody over something or you're starting to, you stop and you think, 
is this going to matter in five seconds? Is this going to matter in five minutes, five hours, five days, five weeks, five years? If the answer to any of that is no, let it go. Let it go. Move on. Say you're sorry. And go back to living life. You'd be amazed at how much more of a better quality of life you have if you just let things go. If they're not important, stop worrying about it. Hmm. Worry about the things you can control. I tie something else into that with your, you know, with your spouse is, well, I guess just with anybody really is being curious. Practice being curious instead Hmm. of jumping to conclusions, instead of assumptions, instead of, you know, thinking that, you know, right or better or, you know, thinking for that other person, right? So communicating. Right. So have, you know, do your due diligence to communicate with that person and be curious. Hey, I see that you did this. Why? You know, and not, not in an ugly way, but like, you know, Hey, I thought that we were doing it this way. You know, did you have a, did you have a different idea? You know, not coming in, you know, in an aggressive way, you know, if you don't have to be right, yeah. if you have to do, we got to do right. But if you don't have to be aggressive, you know, be, you know, curious, get the full picture and yeah. building that communication, being forward like that, a lot of people are going to appreciate it and you're cutting out, you know, any chance for miscommunication, which is going to cause a lot of interpersonal conflict, right. Or has a potential to cause a lot of interpersonal conflict. But it also shows that you're interested. Yeah. Right. And that's huge, especially in, you know, a romantic relationship, right? Showing that, you know, one, you see, right? You're observing. You're like, hey, I see this happening, right? I'm not just, you know, dead to all of this. But two, I'm curious as to, you know, what your thought process is. I want to I wanna know. You know, you're, you're tying, you know, that relationship, you know, closer and closer together, which I think is. Yeah. A really neat tool exactly dude and taking an interest in your spouse and what their interests are and vice versa mm-hmm. dude oh, that will develop such a strong bond even if you don't give a crap about what they're interested in but at least you know well acting like it well or, for the married it, it guys put you in the mindset of actually caring about that yeah well for the married guys here's another daily hat for you date your wife Yes. Every single day. Dude, I'm no matter, guilty of that so often. No matter how big or small. Life can get. Yeah, no matter yeah. how big or small. Something that I do every single day without fail for what well, we've been, we'll be married five years this June. Every single day before I leave for work, I kiss my wife on the head. And I do that because the one time I didn't, she chewed me out when I got home. <laughs> it's like I didn't move, but I know you didn't kiss me on the forehead today, and she actually chewed me out. But you know that was more for comedic effect. But she knew, she could tell, and yeah. you know I'll never know if she's awake or if she's asleep, you know, because she, you know, she looks dead of the world to me. But that is an unspoken thing between us, and that is a very important thing for me and my wife that. You know, without me saying anything, right? I'm leaving before the sun even comes up. But hey, I see you. I love you. I'm gonna miss you. I'll come back soon. You know, and that's a that's a daily ritual. That's what I do every single day, regardless of if I you know work or not. But you know, date your wife, gentlemen. You know, start off dating her anyways, and just, yeah. You know, if all goes to plan, she's going to be there forever. So, you know, make the most of it. Right. Oh, dude, yeah. Like, I can't tell you how many relationships I've had fail just due to lack of communication. Yeah. Mainly on my part, but it does go both ways. Um, the, the figure I just saw here, I mean, this was from 2019. 
but communication problems was the most common factor that led to divorce, 65%. After that was by inability to resolve issues at 43%. Oh my gosh. Dude, that is crazy. But She's I get sad. it because marriage is the leading cause of divorce. <laughs> Ouch. Bad joke. No, but communication, 100%. Something else I heard when I was yep. when I was still dating was – you know, in any in any relationship, you're either moving closer to or further away from somebody. You never stay stagnant. No. So you're either being drawn closer together or you're being pulled farther apart. So is a is a daily is a constant choice in every interaction. Yeah. How you want to it is. You know, whatever you choose, how you want to how you want to move. So. Yeah. You got anything else, brother? You got to tie it all together. So why is all this important? This is important because I firmly believe that you can be whatever kind of man you want to be. This is a dad's we talk yep. about things that your dad should have taught you. The actions that you take determine the kind of man you are. Not where you were born. Not your religion, creed, occupation, anything. Your actions determine what kind of man you are. And your actions can change at any time. If you're not happy with the man that you are, change. Change. Yep. If you don't know how to, imagine the kind of man that you want to be and start doing what he would do in those given situations. Fake it till you make it. Fake keep, it till you make it. Keep I doing love it. it. Seriously. And you know, I you know, it's funny enough to say, but when I was, you know, you will have points throughout your life where you can remake yourself. Granted, you can do that at any time, right? But there are natural points yeah. in your life, natural milestones where you can remake yourself. You know, changing schools, changing jobs, changing cities, you know, enlisting in the armed force, you know, whatever, you know, you will have these milestones where you can remake yourself. And I got to a point, I think, you know, when I, when I joined the army, when it's like, okay, I'm not happy with the man that I am or where I'm headed. So what does the man I want to be look like? And from that moment, I started doing the, started trying to think and do and act the way that that man would. And power of the mind, power of the mind. And, you know, I want to be the kind of man that doesn't swear in front of his kids or his wife. And so anytime that I get to that point, I choose not to. Yeah. You know, it is a constant choice because what's the easy answer? Easy answer is doing whatever is easiest. Fast the least resistance, right? But we're called to something better. So, tying it all together, you get to choose. Yeah. And that, that, these, you know, these healthy habits, these daily habits, these, you know, little disciplines, daily disciplines, it's just a fancy way of saying that. You know, your choices, your habits, your disciplines every single day are going to, you know, make you into a greater or a lesser man. So act accordingly. Love it. And with that in mind, if you're still here. Thank you for staying with us. Like this is, this was a heavy episode. Honestly, that got a lot heavier than I thought it would be. Yeah. This was our first episode breaking off from, you know, just like practical, little practical episodes. Yeah. This was more of a, of a mindset episode. I liked it though. I want to see more too. of this. That was, yeah, we'll get there. We'll do it. We'll keep going. Yeah. But anyway, guys, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, be sure to check us out on discord, Instagram. We're both on there. Drop us a line. We'd love talking to you guys. We'd love talking about everything. Honestly, check us out on, uh, Patreon, Substack, shoot us an email. Yeah. If you can send us yeah, a carrier pigeon 
I'm really concerned, but also curious. Smoke signals, flares. Yeah, we're here for it. Do your worst. But yeah, no, thank you so much, guys. We cannot express enough the gratitude that we've had over the last year for all of you still tuning in, listening, talking to us, and just wanting to keep pushing us to be better people and to keep pushing yourselves to be better men and women. We are the Hard Time Strongman Podcast, training up a better class of men. Stay in the fight, guys. Stay in the fight. Stay in the fight.